Ooh, I actually ended my video. I was not as targeted for We Can Be Heroes. But that's not to say I didn't like it. I thought it was fine. But it was, like, dumb in the sense that it went nowhere. By the end of the movie, the, it just says, like, oh, we're just one big training mission to see if you guys can handle it. So, ultimately, this film is useless. It was just one big training mission, which kind of was, like, I hate movies that you wake up and figure out the whole movie was a dream or, like, this, where the whole movie was just a training sim sim simulation. It just takes away all stakes. And plus, I didn't find it funny or that exciting and the effects, you know, were cheesy, as always, for these types of movies. Coming in 60th place is Mad Max Road Warrior, the sequel to the original Mad Max. It's better than Mad Max, not certainly not better than Fury Road. It was, you know, it's fine. It was, you know, some good action. Didn't really care. Better story, at least, but still the same problems of kind of, like, who gives a crap sensibilities, I feel like, so. But, anyways... Yeah, coming in 59th place is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You know, this this film, you know, very popular 80s movie. And I think Roger Rabbit's interesting. I think this kind of world building of the, the Looney Tunes cartoon tune world, very interesting. It was just that it, it, it was just, it, it was, it was borderline. It, everything was borderline. Everything was like, okay, we're going to stop the villain. The villains were very obvious. The setup was very obvious. And it played exactly how you would expect. That's fine. You know, it worked for what it was. But it was, it was nothing special. Coming in 58th place is Grumpy Old Men. Yeah, Grumpy Old Men for me. I thought some parts were funny. Some parts were charming. But overall, it was just not the greatest i think they're you know i think them them coming together at the end was satisfying and heartwarming and i really did you know like these characters it was just that you know overall i i, I just think it was a very glossy movie in the glossy in the sense where it like bland you know bland movie 57th place is ava uh you know i just watched it you know cheesy little action not cheesy but you know a, a throwaway action movie and that's exactly what it was it gave you everything you expect the action and you know, the spyness, and they tried to do something more with giving, like, this character, like, a family, and her alcoholism, and they tried to make it deeper than what it was, but it just all came off unnecessary, because they never went anywhere with it, like, they established the stuff, but then they kind of just made it to joke with her, they, they made these types of serious things the punchline of a joke, instead of going deeper, like, this film doesn't decide if they want to, you know, treat alco alcoholism like it should be, which is a serious issue, or as a joke and like that and then and then do they want to make this a serious movie or a throwaway action movie just, this film just doesn't know but it has a good cast um coming in 56th place is justice league dark justice league dark was is one of the lesser dc straight to home video animated movies i just think it was so weird to have batman in this movie because like you have constantine katana and boston and all of these crazy characters from the dc lore that are like magicians magic so if you could tell me which member of the justice league would best fit the magical side of dc batman's the last guy i would go batman's in like the seer like if batman is on one end of the dc universe then constantine is the other constantine you have like the magical side of dc Batman is the serious Dark Knight side of things, the serious realistic side of things. So to bring Batman into this magical world, it doesn't fit because it's like it's no longer Batman. It's just this throwaway side character. I mean, so it's like I didn't care for that in the story. I just didn't care for it that much, even though I think the premise is somewhat interesting. Coming in 55th place is the Simpsons movie. The Simpsons, the Simpsons movie is interesting. It has all the fun and the charm of of the show it was just that it was just the show but an hour and a half so take it as you will it's this show and it's movie and it's very funny but it's this, this show but a story that that's an hour and a half and i think because of that they definitely drag out some stuff and and it, it was nothing special it was you know nice time killer and i had fun with it coming in 54th place is the maltese falcon I just was bored watching it, to be honest. And it was like it never went anywhere. It never progressed. It was... And, and everything... And I was confused by it, you know. It was, it was hard to... Because, like, 
they had like different names and like one character went by a fake name and then a real name and it was like you couldn't keep up and it was nothing to do with being black and white or anything it was just you know it didn't personally myself like it that all too much coming 53rd place is swingers swingers with john favreau and vince vaughn um I, I don't know it's i just this is the most recent movie i watched on this list the last one i watched in january and it was it was mm, i just don't i don't know how to particularly grasp like, like this whole movie is about this guy who wants to get over a, a relationship that he once had and it just because we never really got to see his original relationship this whole movie was just about okay yes we get it we get it you're in this tough relationship but it felt frustrating and that he would never get over it and maybe we could relate to him if we saw what his relationship with that girl was like but we never got that all we got was him sogging moping you couldn't relate you know maybe if you went through a tough breakup you can relate but if you can't relate to this specific case this specific instant not in general relationships in general i'm talking that this specific instant you can't fully relate and that's true but it, it was fine and you know some funny moments too 50 coming in 52nd place is biloxi blues um this autobi autobiographical um movie um in that sense um it was very very i don't know it was interesting because it was like it's not a comedy in the traditional sense i think what makes it funny is you have these quirky characters and these kind of rude characters that just say funny things like they just like it's not like what they do is funny it's just that they say funny things it's mainly about this great i think it, it shows the story of training for you know going to war and you know man manning up and i think on that aspect it, it works and you know some great characters in the relationship between the the general and you know uh jerome as it grows is is a fascinating relationship okay i'm gonna go speed round 51st place eight heads in a duffel bag joe pesci was good and you know the, the whole premise was very fascinating to me but overall was a nice, charming little film that, you know, was very, you know, was good. Coming in 50th place is Da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code is exposition the movie. There's so much exposition, very little story. Whenever there, whenever the film ramped up, it was fun and exciting and thrilling, but it was like, there's just so many scenes where it was just exposition dump and exposition dump and backstory. And... The whole movie is just basically them sitting around, and there's so many different plot twists. And I, I liked it, but, you know, not that much. 49th place, The Losers. Has a great cast, some great action. Um, funny at times, and, you know, a twist that I didn't really see coming, to be honest. Um, I mean, sort of saw it coming, sort of didn't. Uh, but I had fun with it, but, again, not the greatest movie. And some of the effects don't fully hold up. 48th place, The Never Ending Story. A very famous movie that had, you know, some great balls for different sequences for a kid's movie. However, I think what I'd say keeps it from being, you know, one of the best of the best. It's honestly, um, some, some uh, you know, the story overall is very plain. and Not plain, is is not that interesting. And, you know, it does move at a pretty brisk pace and quick pace and, you know the kid and the kid revolves and it's it's, a, it's an interesting movie but not one i particularly love 47th place is city slickers i love the message of the story i love the philosophical questions city slicker asks city city slicker asks and i just figured this out yesterday the guy who plays the old cowboy won the oscar for best supporting actor which i find crazy because like this is a comedy how do you win an a Best Supporting Actor and Oscar for just a comedy, which shows that this is deeper than a comedy, and I think it is, and it's... Best modes are those philosophical questions, and honestly, the, as far as the rest of the movie, the best parts were at the beginning, where it wasn't in this Western setting. Other than, and then, other than the philosophical questions and when it's not in the Western setting, 
this film kind of drags on a bit. 46th place, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Godzilla King of the Monsters is fine. It is not um, what's, a train wreck. It's not an embarrassment. I think the Godzilla action is good. The visuals are good. I just didn't care for the human characters or the plot itself. 45th place, Extraction. Action amazing. The action is unbelievable. Some of the best action I've seen in years. Um, however, the story just didn't care a damn about. 44th place, Weird Science. Very funny, quirky concept. Some of the themes and scenes just don't hold up um, philosophically. Um... But, it was still a charming film, overall. 43rd place, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. The first movie I watched in January 2021. So, that's dating back to January 1st, in which The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe I first watched. And, it was good. I think the world of Narnia was good. Everything in Narnia was great. Visuals were great. The one thing is, I couldn't really care for the plot and these main characters because there was no stakes for these main characters if they really wanted to after they rescued their younger brother they could have just went said peace and went back through the wardrobe and all 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 is good so it was hard to fully care when they just know that the, the stakes are pretty minute you know coming in 42nd place is crouching tiger hidden dragon uh, this is, um, another foreign language film. Uh, I liked it. The sword fighting, kung fu stuff, it was great. The martial arts, fantastic. The story, it was pretty cliche. I was expecting something. I was, and, and I think I really watched this film for the martial arts, but there isn't a whole lot toward the, till the end. Like, there's a couple of scenes where they seal a sword and stuff, but the really, the big kung fu stuff comes in the third act, and so the other parts is you're watching a subpar story. 41st, for 30, 41st place, Bridge to Terabithia. You know, very sad, very heartbreaking. I think, you know, interesting, the, the, these main characters have great chemistry, but there was some weird stuff where it's they're insinuating that the young boy likes the teacher, that the, that went nowhere, and it was weird that the, the teacher almost seemed to like the young boy, and I was like, what? And I don't know, and it came out. 10 years ago, I don't know, 10 years, 13 years ago, um, I liked it, um, yeah, um, it was cool, and, you know, the themes about imagination, growing up, not growing up, and, you know, it was, it was, it was still fun. 48th place, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Monty Python and the Holy Grail was, was funny, it was really funny, it was just funny, 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 I can't describe this film as anything other than funny, it was, but it was just funny, so it's like, Great comedy, but nothing else but that. But that's okay. Great comedies are great comedies, and they're great for what they are. 39th place, Risky Business. Risky Business was fun and exciting and thrilling and, you know, crazy. And I enjoyed it, even though it was nothing nothing special. I think it was, like, um, obviously the iconic scene where he slides on his socks and his underwear. Um, and... You know, the overall premise is, is interesting, but again, another, you know, movie that was, was iffy on. 38th place, The Fifth Element. The effects don't fully hold up, but its deeper themes and messages are pretty fascinating, and has a great cast, and toward the end it became Die Hard in Space. So that's kind of crazy, and still enjoyed it, but, you know, so, and I think the great characters and stuff like that, but the effects don't fully hold up. 37th place, The Founder, the, you know, some taking over McDonald's, and I think at the heart of it's a movie about, you know, screwing people over, because the whole movie is just showing how one person can corrupt a whole business, and, you know, you, this whole movie at, at the core of it is just two brothers slowly and slowly being inched out of their own company they started, and it's interesting to see the downfall of the McDonald's brothers and the rise of, of Jay Kroc. Or is it Drake or Eddie Croc or something like that? I don't know. Oh, that that's Venom. 36th place, Batman the Killing Joke. Another great... Uh, I think this was a better DC animated straight to home video movie. Uh, even though... It just... It was nothing... Um, out of the ordinary. Um, 
but I still overall had some fond memories with it and you know stuff but but the problem the question marks that brought up were like the first act was focused on Bat- Batwoman and these other B- D level criminals but it went nowhere with that and it was like it became a totally different movie toward the second act where it became Batman versus Joker whereas the first act it wasn't really Batman versus Joker it was Batman and not Catwoman Batwoman against these thugs you know so it was but but I still enjoyed it 35th place The Little Things um a movie I watched recently yeah The Little Things were mixed for me where I loved the performances I I think the story as it built up was interesting and interesting and it became toward the end the third act was seven I it was seven it was poor man seven you know poor man seven you arrest who you you arrest who you think is the bad guys boom you got the bad guy but no you but you want the bad guy because you want to find another body both in seven in this movie boom you want to find a body I'll take you to that body boom we're at the body boom what happens the, the bad guy has this whole big monologue boom it pushes the hero over the edge Boom, the villain gets killed by the hero. Boom, it happens in both movies. Desert location. Boom, bad guy gets killed because he has a monologue that pisses off the hero. Boom, why did they come to that location? Because they were arrested and he wanted to find a body. And the body, it was all crazy. And the one thing different is it, 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 it question marks. I think the biggest thing, the best thing about this movie is it leaves you on a cliffhanger. Like, did he do it? Did he not do it? And at the end of the day, what it, that was the best part, but also the worst part best part and let you questioning let you wondering but the worst part in that you didn't really go anywhere with this movie because if, if it was him oh that's cool but if it wasn't him then the movie went nowhere because we didn't find a killer this whole movie's finding the killer and we didn't find the killer if that wasn't him but it had some great performances and the story you know build up to cool cool moment 34th place rounders poker movie you know into poker matt damon edwin Norton. Very fun, exciting. Poker action was great. You know, figuring out what the cookies meant and all that stuff. Very fun, very exciting, and, and some great poker stuff. And these characters are very fascinating, interesting to me. And so when you craft great characters, great story, and great poker, it makes a good film. Thirty third place, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. It's about acceptance, about you know, commun not communication, but acceptance and forgiveness and. All that jazz, and it worked out to be a pretty good movie overall. That is some great music and great characters, and Quasimodo, and uh, all these characters. And you know, truly, is at the end of the day, accepting people who are different. And that message never gets old. 32nd place, Superman Red Son. This movie was so fascinating because it was a great what if, and I think. What I loved about these what-if stories is it doesn't have to take any sort of traditional route. It could be its own thing that doesn't have to worry about shared cinematic universe. And having this concept of what if Superman was was um, was Russian, I think, goes to show that Superman is crafted by the world he's in. Superman is not just because of the god from Krypton. He's shaped by Smallville. He's shaped by the events that that brought him into this world for who he is and i think having shown superman in this different light is a great character study of what a character study of what a different culture can do for you because superman's so used to being this this kid from smallville that to see him in a different light to see him in a different world shows that that the, how much a different culture in a different world can be and it was just great, and it builds up and builds up, and it's so fascinating. And it's it's not you know it's not build, banking on Superman actions, banking on great stories. Then toward the end, it got into this crazy Superman Brainiac fight that was like, okay, now we're getting into traditional Superman, and that was kind of a bummer toward the end. Thirty first place, Hell or High Water, the modern day western, literally with instead of horses, it's uh, cars instead of you know cowboys, it's sheriffs, and but it was fun. The banks were cool. Heist were cool, great cast, um, but you know, it wasn't the greatest movie. Um, 30th place, Kill Bill Volume 2. Kill Bill Volume 2 was action packed and fun, although I did feel a little bit disappointed when they didn't, when Kill Bill, when Bill didn't, in, in, 
the bride didn't have a big fight. It was like, uh, but but I still had so much fun. And, you know, this film really builds off of, it's really a payoff. It's not even that. It's not, in, they didn't even just make it a payoff to part one. They really made its own thing. But I think it wasn't just, it wasn't quite as exciting as part one, I will say. And 29th place, Sabrina Harrison Ford and a bunch of other castmates. Um, there's, it was very interesting, you know. Someone has a crush on you know, some you know someone, and then he falls in love with the brother, and it's just a great romance film and a unique romance film, kind of because it's almost like a will they, won't they, and then will they, won't they there. Like it's like you keeps you guessing will she end up with one brother or the other brother, and it's like you just don't know. And it's like this movie, while it at the end it's like oh, obviously it would be him, obviously it would be Harrison Ford, but this movie is directed and made in such a way where it leaves you posturing posturing which one they'll end up with and that is going to be part one of me ranking every single movie i watched in january 2021 stay tuned for part two whenever that co- or technically i this is part three in that i ended the other video a little bit act by accident actually i made it part one that ended by accident